Welcome to this workshop about emails and deliverabilities. Now this workshop aims to give you information on what's actually happening with emails. There's a lot of questions being asked about emails going into spam folders, promotional folders, on uh, things like Gmail, and uh, it's a big topic. There's a lot of things to bear in mind that are not associated with Zendler. Uh, we, I will also show you uh, best practices for your account, uh, such as email authentication, and I'll be showing you that after I've gone through some of the kind of principles of email and specifically deliverability. So guys, what we'd like to think in the perfect world is that you would send an email out and they could reply to it or send an email to someone else and it would just go through and everything would be perfect. But in reality, this can never happen because what has happened in the world is that people are sending um, fraud emails to try and get money from people, the phising people, yet lots of unsolicited emails that you never asked for, you're on subscriptions and people sell subscription lists to other companies that then market you. And what happens is over time you start to build up a massive amount of junk uh, that you don't want. So using email can be very hazardous in that area lots of people are ripped off um, every day by um, fraud emails or incentives that are trying to take money from you um, so what has happened is there are a lot of security in place to try to prevent this and it's almost like a shield around your email um, to stop anything without getting into too much technical stuff here um, you um, emails are basically checked before they're sent through and then they might be sent they might be blocked completely um, completely um, redirected out or deleted uh, or they might get through and it might be uh, considered uh, junk or spam or it might be considered a promotion and all of these things are uh, taken into account and actions are applied to it depending on your email client. So you might be using Gmail that might have a different set of security settings and this is what we're talking about now than something else like your own hosting email provider that might have you might have set up your own security on that you might have things like spam assassin which will basically rank the email and if it meets a certain rank or is below a certain rank, then the email will get through to your inbox, no problem. But if it exceeds that, then other actions are taken depending on what has been set up with the, particularly, with the particular security protocol. So um, we're now going to look at what's kind of going on. So now I've done a brief explanation. I'm just going to show you in a graphical sense what is actually happening here. So as you can see here, if we're sending our mail out to somebody, what it's going to do is it's going to hit a wall. And this is a kind of defense barrier or security. And that email will be judged. And when it's judged, if it passes, it will get through to the inbox. It might still get through to the inbox, but be classified as spam or it could be classified as a promotion, basically going into junk. So this security is based on lots of different factors. Now, if it has clearly exceeded the protocol number that is set by the security software, whatever it may be, whether it's Gmail's personal security filter or whether you've set something up yourself or using a third party uh, email, um, to actually check for any spam and things. It doesn't matter if it's rejected, it will bounce back or it will just hit the wall and not get through. Okay, so the thing to remember here is if, it, if it's safer and because it's meeting as many of the requirements as possible, it's more likely to get through directly to their inbox, which is what you want. And there's lots of deciding factors. So I'm going to go through some of the deciding factors. And I'm also then going to show you inside Zenler itself, best practices for the emails. Now, we already allow a kind of 
um, very simple kind of plain text version of email broadcast and automations that go out. And the reason we do this, and people have asked, why can't we have flashy templates and you know all this stuff around the outside? Well, the whole reason behind it is deliverability. We want good deliverability. So by keeping it very simple and almost in a friendly text message type way, we've kept a plain text version. This does not mean that you cannot create your own jazzy templates, uh, which could well come in later. And also you can um, create them using other software packages and drop HTML directly into all of your automations and your email broadcast. So we do not stop that, we're just following best practices. If we were to create Jazzy templates straight away for you guys to use, and there's more chance of them bouncing back, then it would fire back on us. So we have to be very careful and we follow these best practices. So what we're gonna talk about now is how best to actually, well, have a look at the best practices for getting the emails you send out to go to the inbox. Okay, so we have a few points to cover with uh, making your emails better and delivering better. So uh, the first one we're gonna look at is actually uh, triggers. And these are words that you might use in an email that could actually trigger um, a kind of bad mark against them. Um, things would be like overuse of punctuation or um, exclamation marks. Things like free cash, you know, free special, free offer. Um, these kind of things can trigger um, these these kind of uh, scores against you. Also, using things like pound signs, you know, or currency signs in there can also start to trigger things uh, that could actually cause problems. So, all these things you might say this can be in the title, especially, and in the body text itself. So, if you're going to use those kind of things in there, maybe use create a little button, put some text in there, but be very careful about it because. Um, the complexities of getting um, of, of actually being marked down are getting better and better, even to the point where images can be scanned for things like currency symbols and those sort of things. So be really careful. If it sounds spammy, it's usually not a good thing, you know. If you in, and also make sure the content is uh, grammatically correct, runs nicely through, and just sounds pleasing and inviting without being going overboard with these things. So point one is definitely sort of trigger words that could cause um, a problem for sure. Right, point number two is email hygiene of your lists. So um, really the end goal here is quality over quantity. Um, make sure that your lists you're getting are from people that have subscribed to you. Um, do not buy lists, this can be really, really bad. Um, lots of people, especially sort of five, ten years ago, used to buy lots of lists. Not a good idea. You do not want to be spamming people that haven't actually asked for you to send them any kind of correspondence at all. Um, also keeping your email list clean as well. So uh, maybe getting rid of bounced emails, these sort of things. Uh, generally, I find that if I'm emailing people, I really carefully monitor if I'm sending it to people that have just registered on my site because I don't know where they come from. Um, I don't know if they're just looking for a freebie. Um, I feel a little bit more secure with people that have actually purchased something in my courses because they are serious. So email hygiene is really important. So if you've got a lot of bounce backs, especially on just people that have registered on your site, delete them out, okay? Get rid of them. There'll be leads in there. They won't, will not have bought anything. You can filter on bounced so you can get rid of them and keep your email hygiene list really, really clean. Now you can also look at how well you're doing as well. So I'll be showing you that in a minute as well. So email hygiene, point number two, really important. Right, point number three is consistent delivery schedule. So uh, I personally don't follow this, but if you want to get into all best practices, um, make sure that you are maybe delivering emails, especially if it's uh, if you're doing um, a membership site or something like that, you'll probably be sending them out regularly. And if you do send them out regularly, send them out regularly at set time, set day, uh, so that your users know. Now, why is this important? Well, um, 
again, for the security side, what happens is when emails come in, uh, there could be a spike that's generated. And if that spike is generated at a regular scheduled time and you keep to that, then it will actually be a good thing and it will get through. But if it's inconsistent and there's spikes up and then there's not for like three months and then a massive spike up and the next day a massive spike up, again, you can be red flagged. So be really careful about that consistency um, and of delivery and delivering a sort of schedule is a good thing. So it's quite hard because you guys that are actually selling courses like me, um, you don't want to spam people all the time. Um, so you might, it might be less. So there is a line to be drawn. I, I send out emails not that often um, and I try to keep it to a smaller bunch and it's focused on those courses that I'm selling. So I might be selling, I might be sending an email out to one course and then the uh, same day, I might send another email out to another course on there, to, but to different users. Some of the users cross over, of course, but um, that is the idea. Okay, so watch out for that because you can get a spike in traffic that you can be flagged, you can be red flagged for. So that is point number three, um, a consistent delivery uh, schedule. Okay, uh, point number four is um, finding a deliverability optimization features in the email client that you're sending out. The, uh, the um, Zenla system has that already built into it. Zenla Mail has already got it built into it. But for you guys that are using SMTP and those kind of things to send out your emails, or you're even doing it from another another platform altogether, um, something to bear in mind doesn't really affect Zenla because as I spoke to you about before, we make sure all our emails are like plain text. So uh, we try to do that, but we can't we can't predict what you're putting in there. If you're putting excess of images and things like that, this can cause um, this can cause a problem as well. Um, things like uh, that you should look out for is like email throttling. This means instead of sending a ton of emails straight away, it actually throttles it, slows it down, so it's going out more gradually. So these kind of things can affect it as well. Like if you're using um, Zenla Mail inside there, you don't have to worry about that, but you do have to worry about content, which is what we're gonna talk about in the other points moving forwards. Okay, point, point number five is domains. Um, IP addresses, reputable di domains, to be honest. Um, if you've got yourself a custom domain, you want to make sure that that domain and that email, email address is authenticated. We have that built into Zen, as I'll be showing you, but this is a really, really big one. This is where people fall over because people are sending out from, I'll give you, for example, uh, surfdudes.com, uh, my site, and if I, if I send out from um, surfdudes.com coming through Zen the platform and I'm sending it out from my Gmail account, the two do not link up. You will be flagged for that. You will be marked for that. So what I do is I've turned on email authentication and I always make sure that my actual email I'm sending out from is coming through uh, the email. So it would be whatever you like at surfdudes.com and that ties up with the main domain surfdudes.com. This is a massive one. So making sure that it's reputable um, domain and the IP address that's associated with it tie up. This is really, really important. And as I said before, that's one of the main things I'll be showing you in the workshop at the end of these address points. Okay, so point um, number six here is uh, different um, email server providers. So it is definitely worth you doing a little bit of research. I mean, have a look at your email list and see where most of the people are coming from. If they're coming from Gmail addresses, which is big, um, just do a little bit of research on uh, the actual, um, how the email handles spam requests and things like that. So you wanna look at things like Yahoo, Hotmail, Gmail, um, general providers, um, and just kind of work that out. Um, but you can, I mean, it's a, that could be a, quite a bit of work because their algorithms change uh, all the time. But to give you an example of how these things work is the we'll check the ratio of text against the ratio of images that you've used in an email. 
And depending on if you meet that, um, you're lower or you exceed it, you will be actually scored on that and you might not get through. So the ratio of images versus text. So try to follow the 80-20 rule. So that's 80% text to about 20% images. If you can meet that, then you should be okay. So that is something definitely to, to look at. Um, you also want to look at previous engagement between the sender and a specific recipient as well. So have they clicked it? Have they opened it? Um, these can all again be judged against you. Um, it's not something, don't worry about it too much. Just think about that 80-20 rule. Yeah, 80% text, 20% images. Okay, so you can just sort of have a look at your page and just see that you're roughly about that or a little bit lower on the images and you should be okay. So you also want to have a look at your email list as well and see how it's doing. Look at your sender reputation, see if that scores on 100 or like over 90, 95, something like that. Um, if it's dropping down, find out why. Have you got lots of bounced emails that you're sending to repeatedly? These are things definitely that you need to look at as well. So the um, another point that's really important is user engagement between your emails. So it's really going to make a big difference if people are clicking through. So if they're opening your email and they're actually clicking through and going to your page, your course page, um, this will make a big difference because it shows user engagement. Again, that's a tick for you. Um, these systems do remember what's going on with uh, deliverability and you know you can be marked down and up on a sliding basis but if you follow the rules we've set here um, you don't have to go into massive detail just follow what I'm going to teach you in the workshop in a second and you'll kind of understand the basics of it so remember that 80-20 rule, 80% text, 20% images, um, and you should be all right. And then just follow the protocols that I'm going to show in the workshop, and this should help. Now, I'm not going to say to you that I'm going to guarantee that every single email is going to get through, nothing's going to be bounced back, because that is actually impossible to do. I can't tell what content you're putting in there. I don't know where your list have come from. All these kind of um, things that go against you. Google's your friend. Go on Google and if you are getting from a particular um, email server provider, ESP, and you are actually getting um, bad results with that one, say it's Yahoo, just try and find out why. Maybe just do a little bit of research on it. Um, like I said to you before, um, these algorithms always change. They're changing all the time. Um, so, And more security features are being brought out, these kind of things. Um, so you need to bear that and look, look at that as well. Um, Google, for instance, has got a postmaster tool, a tool where you can actually uh, authenticate your email as well. So a lot of these um, sites now, even like um, Facebook and all of these, have ways that you can authenticate that you are genuine and then you will be marked. It's almost like verifying you okay, on these different platforms. So keep an eye out for any of these new features that are coming out and uh, just make sure that you stay on top of it. So obviously, if something comes out that's big, we will always announce it to you. Best practices for doing things. You know, this is um, this is what we try to do. We keep up with these things, um, but uh, there is it's a hard thing to keep up with uh, with when we don't know what you're putting in the email. You know, if every single email had the same images in or the same amount of images and the same amount of text and we knew what links were going, because you've got to be careful with links that are going to an outside site. If they're going to the same site as the domain, that's also going to be good for you as well. So subscriber engagement is really, really important here. So let me just sum up some of those really important parts. Um, really important points that I've covered there. So one thing for sure, do not buy lists. Um, keep your um, list clean, okay? This is really important. Um, creating a plain text emails is better deliverability than a beautiful template that's got loads of images and stuff around the outside with uh, custom fonts in there, those sort of things. Keeping everything plain and simple is the best for deliverability. Um, always ask for permission, always have an unsubscribe on your email, it's really important. Um, so optimizing subject lines, as I mentioned before, no trigger words, these kind of things, again, is really important. Um, and create opt-in incentives that attract the right subscribers. So you've got people, you've got 
things in there that are going to interest you sent it to a list where you know people will be interested in what you're sending out so it's more likely that they're going to click through because you've given them the right um, incentives to actually opt in uh, make sure also that you add alt um, text when you use images as well uh, by default we add those so based on the name of the um, image itself but that is quite an important one um, so uh, also you can ask subscribers to move emails from their spam promo folder um, to their inbox so you can say ask of them to um, just uh, just put you know to take you out of those things uh, you could put that in the email at the bottom or something or even put it at the top you'd only have to do it for maybe a, a few a few of the sends and then hopefully they would have done it and uh, then you won't have to worry about and obviously I said to you be consistent about the email deliverability schedule as well so try to work that in there uh, as I mentioned easy um, unsubscribe link and monitor your email uh, reputation metrics. So I'm gonna jump into the, the workshop now and we're just going to go through some of the things that you can do in Zenla just to make sure that you get better email deliverability. Okay, let's jump into it now. All right, guys, welcome. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna jump in and I'm gonna show you some of the things you need to do when you're sending your emails out. So I'm going to jump into admin and first thing I'm going to do is and first thing to take note of is my domain. Now this is a custom domain that's been added to the Zenla site and you can see that it is surf-dudes.com so my email address needs to be associated with that. So in this case could be courses at surf-dudes.com okay. So I need to make sure for best email deliverability that I am matching this. I do not want to use something like Gmail, right? This is really, really important. So first thing to do is make sure that you're using that, that like that. And then I want you to go into site and this is for pro premium users guys. So we're going to go into integrations and you definitely 100% want to make sure that you actually add email authentication all right now if i edit the details here you can see i've used my domain name there it's not a gmail name i've also from name i've got that surf dudes in there okay then my little strap line so i've got that in there and then i've also done email domain authentication okay and i did this so that it shows and it's checked against this this is big guys do this right if you don't do anything else do this today get this done right so let's go to an email broadcast now and I can just show you a default template here uh, let's come in here now look from name same email from email there really important don't go putting Gmail in there uh, don't go changing this title and sending it out because it needs to come from that same domain. Now, I'm giving you best practices. I'm not stopping you from doing whatever you like, but do not complain if you put something else in there and you're not getting good deliverability. This is crucial, guys. Okay, so um, email list we've got here. So we've got um, our email list and all our contacts in here. I haven't got many in this site, so I can't show you a lot on it. Um, but I'll be jumping around now also the same will go for any courses so if we've got any courses and we've got any automation set up inside here remember these are emails as well you definitely want to make sure that under here you are following those best practices I haven't done it with this one um, but I should put in there courses in there and I should put surf dudes in there okay to make sure that it goes through it's really really important um, because I've done that email authentication. The only reason it was putting David in there was because that is my admin account name, okay? David at D Newton, that's what I set this up with. So when I'm sending this out, I need to make sure that I put the right one in there. And you need to check that through all the mails that you do. You need to check that it is that they're matching up. So this is automations in courses, but exactly the same thing will go to any funnels that you've got set up. So if you've got any automations in any of the funnels, again, you need to make sure that you're actually everything's exactly the same as you had before. So you need to put courses in there. You need to put um, surf dues to keep it all 
consistent throughout the site course in the subject line this could be this could cause a trigger so you might want to take that away there it's a very special cheat sheet so also inside of any live automations that we send out in here if we do any live automations here you need to make sure again that you're matching up with what I said earlier so you've got to make sure that they're in there under courses because it's coming from that domain surf dudes you remember that and that you have that surf dudes in here as well okay so it'll all help so it's the from name surf dudes it means they can find it easily they know it's there and also it ties up with the domain if i put another email address here there is a chance that it won't get through to them or it can drop into their spam or promotion folder and those sort of things okay and also on that note with promotion folders if it sounds very promotional then it's highly likely in the subject or the text it's highly likely that google will see that and it will send it to the promotion folder in the Gmail account. Okay, so this is key. Email authentication, any emails that are going out from your account, keep it all the same, all right? So make sure that you do that. You've got your custom domain, you've got your custom email, make sure that you use it in the site so it all ties up nicely, it all connects up nicely. Um, so that is that. Now when you're going to any of your email broadcast and you send anything else you can see the results you're getting in here you can also filter um, you can go in here and you can create a new one you can find a broadcast in here and you can also look at the stats so your reputation inside here so if i go to my account here and i go to stats here down here, this will give you a bar of your sender reputation. So if we just mouse over this, send your reputation reflects the last 30 days and is updated daily. It goes up for every delivered email and down for every bounce or spam reported. This is our sender reputation bar. You want to make sure that it's high and in the green. Okay, this is really, really, really important. Next thing to look at is bounces in emails. So if we go to site and we go to all people, what you're gonna see here is we have the ability to actually go and select, um, filter people if the email bounces. So we can obviously see their student roles in here and the ones that bounced are probably going to be leads, okay? They might be people that have signed up to try to grab a freebie and no intention of buying the courses because they just won't buy things. Okay, so those sort of people you want to get out of your leads and it's easy to delete them because they'll probably be leads. Um, if they are students, be very careful because sometimes someone's mailbox might be full and the email might bounce, but it doesn't mean that they're not interested in what you're doing. So be very careful. I, I generally don't delete people out of bounce. I'm, if there's a few in there and there's hardly any, I might actually try to contact them, um, maybe straight from Gmail or um, from my um, from my email, separate from Zendler, to say, look, are you okay? What's going on? Can you put me in your um, on your uh, safe list? These kind of things. So to actually find bounces, all you need to do, I haven't got any bounces in here, but I'm, all we need to do is go to all people here. We go to advanced filter, go add a filter. We can select and we can basically select down here and we can go email bounced and we can apply a filter and select a, select an email action. So we're going to select all. So this will select everybody in my platform. I can also select based on courses as well and these things, lessons completed, all this sort of stuff. So I do, I generally do any here. So emails bounced, any, and then I click apply filter. And that will give you anybody that's bounced. So anybody that's bounced there, you could just check them and you could just delete them, okay? Straight out of the system. So that keeps your email. Next time you send out, more will get through, less will bounce, and again, your rep sender reputation will go up. So this is really important. Now, the other thing is, if we're doing an email broadcast, let me just set a new one up. You just wanna make sure you're titling it not with spammy stuff. So, um, um, a, so something like this might be nice. Attend my live class um, on surfing. It's 
three for my special members. So this is just the title of the broadcast. This is not actually going to be the title of the thing, but I'm going to copy it anyway, and I'm going to go create. And now it's going to create my email. So I'm going to say email list. Of course, I'm going to select all, but you can select the actual ones as well. Um, we're doing it through Zenla Mail here. Notice the from email is courses. Notice the from name is sir. Okay. So we're going to click next now. That's all good. And in personalization, I'm going to put something like that. And you might also want to put their email address or first name in there if you want to as well. So you could do that. You could go in here, you could go dear, and then personalization, and then there, something like that. And so in here, you're going to notice that we automatically give you an unsubscribe link and the mailing list. You can't delete these. Um, well, you could delete them and re-add them. You're going to see them in here. This is the personalizations. So remember our 20% images to 80% um, text. So this is where you put all your text in. And of course, you can drop an image there. You can choose one from the platform. Um, again, also another thing to bear in mind, make sure that your images are at the size you want them to appear in the email. Don't bring in massive great images and then drag them down. It's not a good idea. It increases the size of the mail. And again, that could be picked up. So if I go and select a big image, um, like these are 1080, I think, and I bring that in, look at the size of that image. So I really, if I'm putting this in here, I should really reduce it down to the size I want. And I should not click in here and drag like this because that's not going to help with the file size. All right. I should just actually redo it to the size I want. So now I've got that image in there. I'd have to do 80% text against that image to make it best practices, if you like. I know that doesn't happen all the time. You know, you might get away with a bit more, but um, we're talking best practices now. So that's what we're doing. So guys, uh, follow these. They, um, they really do work you'll get through. Make sure you definitely check in your sender reputation. You're cleaning your list of any of those bounces. You're making sure you're trying to stick with 20% images to 80% text. Um, and you're also trying to not make it spammy, triggery. And you've gone in there and you've done your all your email authentication. Remember, it's under site. It's under integrations. It's down here under Zenla Mail. And you just need to check your details in there and your email domain authentication. And remember, it should all match up with your domain name. So this is uh, pretty extensive. I've covered quite a lot here. And so you're kind of realizing now that there's these barriers that we can't help you with, um, such as how much images you're putting in there, whether you're using a Gmail address, if you've even activated the email domain authentication. We can just tell you about it and present you with the information, but it will be up to you to implement that and to check your deliverability when you're sending things out. So guys, Definitely check it all out. Make sure you're getting lots of interactions in your emails and people are clicking through and there's not many bounces. Be very careful about the lists that you've got and how you've obtained them. You know, always the best thing is to get people to register through the site because they're coming to you. They're interested in your subject and you can follow up on that as well. So really important email deliverability. Um, Rakesh asked me to do an extended um, version of this so that you can actually understand it all. And I've gone through it. So hopefully this has cleared everything up on email deliverability. We have a lot of questions on this um, all the time. And we had to, we, we've now addressed it with giving you the information you need. Again, Google's your friend, definitely get on there and check out more about why stuff doesn't go through and why it goes to spam and promotion folder. You know, Google's there to help you. We're just presenting you with the information that is currently to date. Um, so hopefully all your emails will go through from now on. Let us know how you get on and take care guys.